Bookmark Chronicles today I'm doing my October wrap up so I was a little worried that I was not gonna make it through all the books that I put on my TBR but I did it mostly with the help of audiobooks but let's get started. The first book that I read this month was Dark Places by Gillian Flynn and this we're following Libby Day who at seven years old lost her family. Her mother and two sisters were murdered and for the past 25 years her brother has been in jail for committing that crime. As an adult Libby meets some people who think that her brother could be innocent and so she starts looking into the case to find out what really happened that night. This was good there were definitely a lot of twists and turns that I appreciated however Gillian Flynn has this weird ability to constantly create characters that are not likable and to create environments or set scenes that just feel really disgusting and dirty so I will give her credit for that. I rated this three stars. I didn't love it but I didn't hate it but then again I think that's kind of how I feel about all of her work. I did enjoy it but it was just kind of average. The next book that I read was Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Shakaporty. This is the second book in the David Bod trilogy. I rated this four stars. I was really enjoying it. I was loving where it was going. There was a lot of build up and I liked it until the last few chapters because something happened and now I'm just confused to be honest. I can't say too much about the plot of this book because it is the middle of a trilogy but if you're unfamiliar with City of Brass and that we are following Nari who is sort of a con artist in 18th century Cairo. However she does have this special ability where she can sense sickness in people. So one day when she's trying to help a young girl she accidentally summons an ancient Jin warrior. He also realizes that there's something special about her so he takes her to the magical city of Devabad. While there Nari gets to learn a little bit more about her past and we also get to see the inner workings of the city that is on the brink of a civil war. So we get Nari's point of view as well as Alizade al Qatani, who is the second son of the king and honestly that book was a good time. I gave it five stars. Like I said this one was only four stars because of the ending. I do have four reviews of both City of Brass and Kingdom of Copper on my channel so I will be sure to link those. I will say though if you've read City of Brass and are going into this one there is a five year time jump and I think it's important to know that because if you start reading it you're kind of like wait a minute where have five years gone and that's kind of how I felt so I wish I had known that before going in otherwise I'm really excited to continue the series I've been buddy reading it with Dasha and we will be reading Empire of Gold next month. The next book that I read was Murder by the Book by Lauren Elliott this is the first in a series and those were following Addison who receives an inheritance from her great aunt. She doesn't ever remember meeting her great aunt or visiting the small town that she lives in but with her inheritance she moves into the house that her aunt lives in and then opens a rare bookshop in the middle of town. As soon as she opens her shop things start going downhill. Her shop gets broken into, her house gets broken into, and it seems like the people around her just really want her gone and she doesn't understand why. There are also some things in her past that she's trying to forget but she starts to think that they may be linked to what's going on right now. So this is my first time reading a cozy mystery and I definitely think that cozy mysteries are a genre that I will enjoy however this was not the one for me. I rated it 2.75 stars and a part of the problem was I I hated the main character. She was so fucking annoying. She was really rude and mean to people that were helping her. She would snap at them for no reason or she was just ignoring things that were very fucking obvious. And I understand that amateur sleuthing is a huge part of Cozy Mysteries. However, when the same thing gets shown to you like three or four times, 
I expect you to pick up on it. So I didn't love the main character. My favorite character was her best friend who was like the person who owns the tea shop next door. And then on top of all that, there was a romance that I didn't find believable. I didn't feel the chemistry. It wasn't working for me. So I will not be continuing the series, but if you have recommendations for other cozies, please send them to me because I definitely think that I would enjoy them. This just wasn't it. The next book that I read was Iron Widow. Y'all, <laughs> let me just tell you that this is now tied for my favorite book of 2021, tied with Ray Bear, which y'all know I love because I never shut up about it. But damn, this was good. I knew it was going to be good after just the first chapter and it definitely did not disappoint. So let me see if I can explain this properly. In this world, essentially what is the military has these machines called chrysalis that have to be piloted by two people, typically a man and a woman. It's a very patriarchal society though, so the male pilots get all the glory and the female pilots are really only considered concubine pilots, that's what they're called. So when our main character's older sister gets sent to be a concubine pilot and dies, the younger sister enlists for that same pilot so she can get revenge. Now, our main character is not expecting to survive after she kills this pilot. I do want to draw attention to the fact that there is an author's note at the beginning that says, beware that this contains scenes of violence, abuse, and suicide ideation, and that is very prominent. So make sure you pay attention to the author's note at the beginning. But she's like, there's no way I'm gonna survive this. He's so popular, everyone loves him. He's a hero in our country. So she expects that when this happens, the government is going to come after her. So she meets the pilot and immediately they get thrown into battle unexpectedly. So typically what happens is because both pilots are powering the chrysalis, usually the woman is just much weaker than the man and that's why she ends up dying. But in this case, our main character is actually more powerful than the male pilot and he ends up dying. So she becomes an iron widow. Like I said, patriarchal society, a lot of people are upset about the fact that she survived and the other pilot didn't. A lot of people are after her, a lot of people are working against her, but she's not going down without a fight. That's all I'll say about that. Hopefully I explained that in a well enough way that makes it sound intriguing because this book is so fucking good. But in addition to that, there's also a love triangle that I didn't mind. For the first time in my 27 years, there is a love triangle that I do not hate because it's so well written. Obviously, I gave this book five stars and I will be a guest host for Rachel's Feminist AF book club on November 6th. We will be doing a live show to talk about Iron Widow and I'm so excited. It's gonna be a good time. I cannot wait to talk to everyone about this book. It's so fucking good. So if you have not read this, get it. If you haven't read Ray Bear, you gotta read that. Oh my god, I'm, I'm so shocked <laughs> that I enjoyed two YA fantasies this much. This is a big deal. The next book that I read was The Chestnut Man. This is about a serial killer who leaves chestnut dolls at his crime scenes. While detectives are investigating this case, they realize that it might be connected to one that happened a year earlier. That's all I'll say about that. I would not recommend reading the synopsis for this because it does give away a lot. I would also say the same about Murder by the Book. I didn't read the synopsis to Murder by the Book until afterwards and it gave away way too much. So don't read the synopsis. Just Serial killer and chestnut dolls. That's, that's all you need to know going in. So I did enjoy this, sort of. I gave it three and a half stars. It could have been higher because there were a lot of good twists and turns that I love. Y'all know I'm a sucker for a good plot twist. However, I felt like there were times when it was being unnecessarily vulgar. And during those times, it was often violence against women and children. So there are content warnings for sexual abuse and child abuse, as well as just the gory nature of the crime scene. So if you're not someone who enjoys body horror, don't read this book. This was also turned into a Netflix series, so I will be watching the series at some point. And the last book that I read was The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. So this book was gifted to me by Dasha and unfortunately I didn't love it as much as we both thought I would. I rated it three stars so I didn't think it was bad. I think that I just wasn't prepared really for what was going to happen and in this if you're unfamiliar we're following four friends from childhood who do something in their youth that comes back to haunt them 10 years later. That's pretty much all the synopsis said and I really appreciated that. However, I think I just wasn't prepared for how unrealistic it is, if that makes sense. Like the chestnut man, serial killer, shit like that happens all the time. 
things that happen in here not so much I would say I also didn't really necessarily love the ending there is a certain turning point I suppose that um I just couldn't vibe with so I think that was the issue because the horror part well done really great really creepy made my skin itch it was just a part of the story that I didn't necessarily love and I think that's the problem I'm gonna have to talk to Dasha about this because I can't say anything here without spoiling it so, but yeah so I will definitely be interested to read something else by Stephen Graham Jones though I know he released another book I think this year can't remember the name of it but I know the cover is mostly white I've seen it a few times on booktube so didn't love this one but not to any fault of the author I think I just wasn't prepared for what it was going to be and I just didn't really know how to receive it if that makes sense but I definitely recommend this and it was a good read for spooky season. So those are all of the books that I read in October. Let me know if you have read any of these or if they're on your TBR. Otherwise that's all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next video.